Hi, I'm Ben Canning, and this micro lecture is on wave interference. Now, so far we've talked about uh, reflection and refraction. Reflection being the bouncing of a wave off of a surface or a barrier of some sort, and refraction being the bending of the wave path. Now we're going to talk about interference. In other words, what happens when two waves kind of collide? So first, what I want you to do is think about it for a second. You might pause the video. What happens when these two waves hit? Do they like crash into each other and break apart? Do they like shatter in some way, like go off into multiple little waves? Um, do they like combine together? Do they uh, do something else, cancel out in some way? Think about it for a second. What do you think? Okay, well, when two waves, um, imagine this as a rope, and one wave is coming this way, and one wave is coming this way, and two waves come towards each other, when they finally meet and overlap, they make a bigger wave. So in this case, when two waves overlap, their displacements add together. So if we think about it, the first waves were about this tall, so I'm going to leave my mouse about right here, and we can see that afterwards the next wave is basically twice as tall. So it's the addition of those two displacements. The principle that describes this adding of their displacements together from two or more overlapping waves is called the principle of superposition. It's not something that's just physics related. It applies to many different things. Basically anything that involves one thing stacking on top of another. And so that's what's happening here. It's just that one thing is stacking on top of the other. Well, the question now comes, what happens after they hit? Are they going to be destroyed? Like, is this just this one big, massive kind of push up, and then they're gone? Um, is it going to break apart? Are they going to bounce off of each other? What's going to happen? So pause and take a second to think about it. Okay. Well, it just so happens that while they're overlapping, or while they're in the same position, their displacements add together. But other than that, the waves carry on their merry way as if nothing ever happened. Meaning this wave is going to continue moving this way as if the other wave didn't even exist. And so you only see that kind of crazy big wave in that brief second that they're overlapped. Here's another picture of multiple snapshots where we have one big wave and one small wave overlapping. So here we can see that they're overlapping just a little bit, so that's why you kind of get this little lump in the middle. Here they're overlapping completely, and that's why you get a bigger wave than either of them before, and then they kind of carry on through. All right, so next question. What happens if you have waves that are the opposite? So we've got one wave that's up and one that's down, or wave pulse, I should say. What do you think happens? Pause the video, take a moment, think about it. All right. Well, as they go towards each other, what's going to happen is you're still going to add the displacements, which means if this is a positive displacement and this is a negative displacement and they're both the same size, they cancel each other out. So based on superposition, their displacements cancel each other out. And afterwards, they're going to continue to go um, in the same direction they were going as if nothing happened. Now, if one of these waves was a little bit smaller than the other, then what you would see is that those two would add together. So if this was, let's say, negative 5 and this was positive 3 instead, then the end result of their amplitudes over that one brief moment of overlap would be a negative 5 and positive 3, so it would be a negative 2. So it would be a slight kind of downward wave in that sense. So superposition describes how to add those two um, amplitudes, or not amplitudes, displacements together. Um, but in general, we call this wave phenomena interference. Constructive interference is when you get two things that add together and make something uh, bigger, so a bigger displacement. Destructive interference is when you have the two things overlap and cancel each other out. So constructive is this one, and destructive is this one. Now, we use this idea all the time, namely, um, in uh, one example is in noise canceling headphones. The way it works is there's noise from the outside world and the goal of the headphone is it has a little microphone on it that listens to this noise and then creates a wave that's the exact opposite of it. Now it's not perfect so it doesn't cancel everything out but it creates as much of an exact opposite wave as possible so when they combine together what you get is two things that end up canceling out which is silence. So that's how they work. Another example of this is in the ocean. 
So if you have two five foot waves coming in and you happen to be in the one spot, right or wrong spot, depending on your point of view, um, where the two waves overlap, then what you get is a huge 10 foot wave. So the example we showed you before of this guy down here, and this is probably a 15, maybe a 10 to 15 foot wave at least. Um, and this is happening right on shore because two waves are combining. And so it's causing this huge upswell in that sense. That's it for this one. Three or more bullet points worth of notes, a one to two sentence summary, and please do your follow-up questions on Google Forms.